In the book of Isaiah, we read these words. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and they do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Well, thank you for joining us at Calvary Baptist Church, and you'd be welcome to join us Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. right here for in-person and live worship. Right now, we don't have pre-registration, but if the numbers get to the point where we can't socially distance properly, then we will introduce pre-registration. You can check the website if you're ever wondering if we have pre-registration or not. But thank you for joining us today. We are looking at the second in the series of New Beginnings, and today we're looking at uh, Noah and the Flood and that great new beginning, that kind of reset for humanity. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. So thank you for joining us. Thank Kim for the scripture focus today. And let us, let us worship, but let us begin with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence together, though, though apart. And we thank you, Lord, for life and all that you have given to make life possible. And we thank you for eternal life and all that you've done to make eternal life with you possible. And so we thank you for the rainbow, a reminder of your promise of life. And we thank you for the cross, a reminder of all that you've done for us to give us eternal life. So thank you, Lord. Lord, as Kim reads to us the scripture focus, Lord, may your word uh, be helping us to grow and to grow in you, uh, that we may be blessed and be a blessing. So this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9, God's covenant with Noah. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. But you must not eat that anything that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal. And from each man, too, I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If only we could get a fresh start. If only we could start over, it would be so much better, right? A new beginning would be a great beginning. We might think of this when it comes to relationship. If only we could start that one over again uh, for some people. We might think of this with parenting. <laughs> I know, uh, it feels to me like you just sort of, sort of start getting the hang of what parenting is all about. And the next thing you know, your kids, you're, well, next thing you know, you're an empty nester. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, oh, can we start over and do some things better? Um, so maybe it's parenting for some, maybe, well, there's all kinds of things, but maybe it's life in general. For a lot of people, it's like, can I, we just start over? and do it right this time. Uh, some people might look at the entire earth and say, look at the mess it's in. Can we not just start over as humanity? Uh, why don't we just flood the whole thing and start over and do it right this time? You see, a new beginning would be a great beginning. That's kind of what we, we think, right? Uh, but, but will it be? Well, we're going to look back to a, a new beginning in the past where it really was a hitting of the reset button, a, a fresh start, a, a chance to do things better. And we're going to see how it went. And yes, it was a time where there was a flood where they really did just wipe every, all that mess out and allowed for a fresh start. Uh, so you know what I'm referring to. It's Noah and the ark and the flood and all that. And I'm guessing that many of you know that story. And so let's, let's take a look at it. And, uh, and I'm sure you remember the parts about God seeing the earth and being displeased with how things were turning out. And well, well let's take a, a quick moment to, to discover really what it is that was annoying God. And uh, so we see this in Genesis chapter six. 
The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And he's sorry that he created humankind there. But let's move on to verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. So if there's a word that keeps showing up there, it's the word violence. And this, this idea of humanity created in the image of God, but here they are, there's violence against one another, which is violence against somebody created in the image of God. That's not right, that's not good. And so God is not impressed, so it's time to start over, a fresh start. So he chooses the most righteous man, Noah, and says, you and your family, you're gonna build an ark, the animals are gonna come into it, well, at least enough to repopulate the earth. There's a flood, 40 days, 40 nights of rain, that finally stops. The, the flood continues on for quite some time. They're in the ark for over a year. And finally, the ark rests. Uh, Noah's able to figure out through sending out birds that, uh, that uh, yeah, they, there's stuff growing out there now that will support life so we can leave the ark. So they do leave the ark. And God gives this promise to never, ever destroy in that way again, uh, to not destroy, but, to, but instead, he, he puts this rainbow in the sky to, to remind people, and actually to remind, it says in the scriptures, as a reminder to God himself of this covenant of pr the promise to not destroy. And so we have the rainbow as that sign of the promise. So how did this fresh start go then? Well, that's, that's probably all the story of Noah that most people know, whether they go to church or not. But there's more to the story that a lot of people don't know of what happens next. So what does happen next? Well, you can read about it in Genesis chapter nine, and I'm not going to read it all to you, but I'll kind of summarize it, where the first thing you know, um, Noah is getting uh, plastered. Well, that's, that's a way of referring to getting drunk. So drunk that he passes out in his tent, and for some reason, he's naked. Uh, so there he is, passed out in his tent, naked, and one of his sons, he has three sons, uh, Ham, sees him and goes out and tells the brothers. Now, we're not given any detail on what he said, but it seems to be a, a matter of shame and embarrassment for Noah. Uh, so it must have been something like, hey, hey guys, come and see dad. What an idiot. Probably something like that, something that would bring embarrassment and shame to the father. So the two brothers, they do actually right by their father. They, they, they walk in backwards so they don't see their father naked and, and passed out and they put a blanket over him. And uh, so a much better way of dealing with things. But what happens next is that Noah, when he wakes up and finds out what Ham had done, that embarrassment, that shame, what does Noah do? But he lashes out basically with a curse. And he doesn't just curse Ham. In fact, he doesn't curse Ham at all. He curses Ham's son, which will be Noah's grandson named Canaan. And so he says, cursed be Canaan, lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers. He also said, blessed by the Lord, may my God be Shem and let Canaan be his slave. May God make space for, for Jepheth and let him live in the tents of Shem and let Canaan be his slave. And so here's this per Canaan, you know, he's the grandson, has nothing to do with this. And here's Noah lashing out with a curse. So how's this new beginning going? Well, if you look at God's part of this new beginning, it's going really well. This promise of blessing uh, rather than curse. And the whole idea of rainbow, you, the word bow is as in bow and arrow is in rainbow, as in it's like from the rainbow, it's a bow that shoots the rain kind of the ancients were thinking in those terms that rainbows, that's where maybe lightning was shot from. Uh, these kinds of things, the ancients would think in those ways, but, but there's a, the idea of weapon right in there. And there's the, this idea of God hanging up his bow, this weapon, and the Hebrew word behind it, it's the exact same word for rainbow as it is for a bow, as in bow and arrow. So when God basically puts up his weapon and says, I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to respond with violence. That's not the way, that's, that's not my heart. That's not what I want to do. So that's the way God responds. But what about Noah? 
What, is he, what does he do in this new beginning? He responds with curse. He places a curse, not, not on his son Ham, but upon his grandson, who had nothing to do with it. And now it does happen that, uh, that Canaan actually would become that nation Canaan, and that they, they would dwell in what becomes the promised land, and that the Israelites are come to take that land from the Canaanites. But that's not a signal of God uh, really agreeing with or exonerating Noah for that curse. Uh, but that was really a case of just the way things playing out, the natural consequences for the Canaanites for the way they lived. And uh, so we want to be careful here that we don't try to look at this curse of Noah as being some sort of uh, Noah speaking by the Holy Spirit a good thing. Uh, but rather, there's a contrast here being drawn of here's this new beginning, and how does it start? But this idea of some people are better than others. Remember, everybody's created in the image of God, but here already we have this idea of uh, Canaan shall be a slave to the others, that some are better than others. And ironically, Christians throughout the ages have actually used this very passage uh, to, to support slavery, uh, a very wrongful use of scripture in that way. And missing out on the point here that this, was, this curse was not, a, not the good way to respond. Here is the new beginning, and here is Noah. And yeah, he's the most righteous man on earth, but even he needed some deep heart work. Uh, even he had hang-ups. Uh, new world, new possibilities, but not making good on it because of old hang-ups, of old ways of thinking, old ways of doing things of the natural inclination of curse rather than blessing, of when one is offended of retaliation, of getting back. So the new beginning was really off to a bad start. God was blessing, Noah was cursing. It's kind of the new beginning, but the same old problems the same old hang-ups. But what about us? What about when we have the opportunity to have a new beginning, a fresh start? Anytime that we have a new beginning, um, is it just an opportunity for the same old us and the same old problems again and again? Uh, we can think of those who go from maybe workplace to workplace to workplace, and but things kind of pan out the same every time, or from relationship to relationship to relationship, and things pan out the same every time. Maybe there's something that needs some work there. Maybe there's some hard work needs to be done there. Are we bringing our old hang-ups and our old selves to new beginnings? And that's really an important question for us to think about. And the question might come up is, well, can we ever change anyway? Could Noah have changed? Can we change when we have a new beginning? Well, yes, and in fact, we are called to change. Uh, Jesus calls us to change when he says, pick up your cross and follow me. Now, sometimes when we think of that term, we think that Jesus means endure whatever suffering comes your way. That's actually not what he means. Pick up my cross and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. In other words, notice how, again, remember how Noah responded to offense by cursing. Now watch Jesus. How does he respond to offense? when the disciples flee, when Peter denies him, uh, when the religious leaders, they frame him, when the Romans actually put him to death, when everybody, everybody deserts him basically and turns against him, how does Jesus respond? How does God respond to us when God comes to us and we as humanity, we put him to death at the cross? How does God respond? He says, I'm going to love you and give you the opportunity to be in relationship with me. I'm offering you reconciliation and forgiveness. We put God to death in Jesus. We put God the Son to death, and he loves us anyway. Notice how Jesus, notice how God responds to offense and how different that was to how Noah responds to offense. And so here we have Jesus saying, come follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. In other words, when you are offended, respond in the way that Jesus did. Forgiveness, grace, love, the opportunity for reconciliation. Respond in that way and not the way of Noah, the way of 
curse, the way of setting some people up as better than others, the way that could very often lead to violence, uh, which was the big problem in the first place. And notice that violence is brought to bear against Jesus. And yet he forgives, he loves. That's a very different way. And so we are called to be different, to live differently. And we are enabled to be different through God's Holy Spirit. We have help. The verses that you have heard me say the most over the nine years that I've been with you, it's over nine years now, from Galatians chapter 5. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit, the consequence of walking with God. And notice that all of these things, it's deep heart work. It's, it's God working in our heart to do some very deep heart work. And there are things that we might, might think we need to fix. Uh, maybe, maybe we're smokers and we feel we need to give that up, things like that. But actually, God is more interested in the heart work of, of getting into our hearts and changing these character traits about us. Uh, this is deep stuff of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We have that kind of help in changing so that we can pick up our cross and follow Jesus in the way of love. So we can face, therefore, new beginnings as new people with new tools <laughs> rather than the old hang-ups, with new character uh, rather than being our old selves. Now, it's a long journey, and sometimes we are impatient, right? As one of the fruit of the Spirit to, to pray for is patience, especially of patience and God's working in us, because we sometimes expect that we'll just wake up a, a new person perfect, and it takes time to do this heart work. And sometimes the hardest part of it is seeing the need for the heart work, uh, of seeing the problems that we have. In fact, reading, looking through what Bible scholars had to say about Noah in Genesis chapter 9, some, some have trouble seeing that Noah wasn't responding well there, and they're, they're defending his, his curse of, of Ham. Uh, reading into it, maybe there were things like, maybe Ham raped his father, or... Um, or something like that, or castrated him. Those are some theories that, are out, that have been out there for a long time about why Noah reacted the way he did. But I think Noah reacted the way he did because he was carrying the same old self, the same old, um, old hang-ups into this new beginning. And he was the most righteous man at that time. But he did not have the righteousness of Christ. And so it's Christ we want to follow. And become a new person in Christ. And that takes time, it takes work, and it also takes being able to see, and that's what repentance is a large part about, seeing the things in us that do need changing and asking for the Lord's help in that. Seeing when there's no joy there and reaching out for it. Seeing when there's no patience there and reaching out for it. And all these kinds of things. So not only are we called to change, but we're also enabled to change. So when there's a new beginning, we truly can face it as a new people with a new hearts. So when there was a beginning back, a new beginning back with Noah, it didn't go so well because there's Noah responding with the same old heart, the same old kind of troubles that would lead to the same old violence. But in Christ, when there's a new beginning, well, even just in knowing Christ, every day is a new beginning. And we can face that new beginning with a new heart and God helps us with that. So do you have new beginnings in your life? Let's face it with new hearts. Let us spend some time in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your promises to us, which we learn about in the scriptures. Thank you for the promise of life and promise of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your presence and for your grace and for your love. We thank you that you do not respond to us as our sins deserve, but in accordance with your loving character. Lord, may your Holy Spirit be working in us, that each day may be a new beginning, a new opportunity to bless others through prayer, through our attentiveness to their needs, uh, through love. Lord, may each day be a new opportunity for us to grow. Help us, Lord, to say our hang-ups and our quirks through which we might be harming others or ourselves. 
May our hearts be changed and changing, that we may face each day with renewed hearts. Lord, we pray for each other, for those facing challenges and difficulties, for those facing new beginnings. Looking at our wider world, Lord, may we someday look back at these tumultuous days that we face right now and say, this truly was a new beginning and good things came through it. Lord, may we look back at our lives and say, we've had many new beginnings and we are changed people through them, through your work in us. Lord, may each day of life in Christ be a new beginning for us. And Lord, thank you for teaching us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And amen. If it feels like something's missing when we come to the end of a worship expression, well, there is something missing, that is singing. And so please be sure to check out the playlist of songs and hymns that go along with today's worship. Also the usual sound of Calvary Baptist before and after service, which traditionally was pretty noisy as people are in relationship and talking with one another. And we're starting to hear that again. However, if you're watching this, you're probably not a part of that. So please be sure to be connecting uh, with one another. And so thank you again for joining us. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.